Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dave Holmes and we are going to do a really quick, very simple beginner level introduction to Pry. Uh, Binding.Pry is the Ruby tool that will stop your uh, code once it hits. Um, there are similar tools to pretty much other to, to pretty much all the other languages. Um, JavaScript has debugger. Once you get to Ruby on Rails, you'll be using Bybug. Um, but I want to start with uh, Ruby because this was the language that I first learned. And once I got the hang of Pry, it made my coding a million times easier. So whenever you're using uh, Pry, the first step is to require it right up here. Um, as well as just to make sure that you've installed the gem of Pry. Um, if you haven't done that yet, it's super easy. Just all you have to do is right here in your console, gem install Pry, and press enter. Um, so what this is going to do is, as you can see, we're going to run toy.rb. Um, and how you do that is you just go to the folder that, you're, that you want to be in, the folder that toy is in, and then you run, and then in your terminal, you run ruby toy.rb. Now, when this is going to, what's going to happen first is we're gonna see in the terminal these print out, and then it's gonna hit this binding.pry. So let's see that right there. Here we go. So we're going to print this, then it's going to stop. As you can see, it came out in the terminal just like we expected it. Now, so everything um, about running the code is put on pause until we exit the pry. And then you see the final put statement that we have right here come out in our terminal. Now, why is this helpful? That's a great question. And we're gonna talk a little bit about this right here. So once we get to doing um, mapping, uh, doing any kind of um, complicated program or even doing like a for loop, uh, Pry can be really helpful to figure out what certain things are. So right here we have, we're going to map an array. As you can see, the map, the array is pretty um, nondescript. It's just one through nine. And once it goes into multiply array, we're going to take each individual element and we're going to times it by two. But I want to double check what's going in as n. And so all I have to do right here is I can throw in binding.pry. And so once we run our code, we hit that pry. And now I can just hit n. And there it is. It's one. It's the first element in our array. And if I go exit, I can do it again. I can see what n is now. And it's two, it's our second element. Now, if I want to get out of the pry completely, I always have that power. All I have to do is hit exit with an exclamation mark. So let's just see it run without the pry. And we'll see, as you can see, we're putting, putting out the new array. Now, this was a really simple array. I wanted to use this just to uh, give an example of what pry can do. When pry, when our arrays that we're going through get a little bit more complicated, that's when pry is really, really helpful. Okay, so as you can see, this is an array of arrays. There's an array with three arrays inside of it. All of them, just like our other array, going from one to nine. Now, I'm not entirely sure when I map this, what's gonna come out as A. And so this is when binding.pry can be really useful. So we're gonna run our code one more time and I'm gonna hit A. And I can see that it's just one, two, three again, but it's in another array. So if I want to get at the individual elements of this array, all I would have to do is hit A dot map. Do, and then we'll just call this for simplicity's sake, B. We're gonna end it right there. And we're gonna jump into another binding.pry just to make sure it is what we think it is. So we're gonna go ahead and exit this completely and we're gonna run our code again. Okay, so here we are, so let's see what B is. It's the first element in our array, number one. 
Now, if we want to, we can go ahead and see what the second element would be as well. And the third. And the fourth. And so if we want to set up the new array just like we did the other one, all we have to do is do b times 2. And then we can exit this completely using the exclamation mark exit. And now we got rid of the pry. Now when we run our um, code, it prints out just like we expected to. Um, so this is a really simple explanation of what pry can do and how it might be helpful. Once you get really diving into more complicated uh, nested arrays and hashes, uh, you'll be using pry a lot to make sure that you're um, mapping over uh, the right elements. So thanks for watching. Hope you all have a great night.